This week, I'm sharing my process for creating custom color palettes in Procreate. We're going to do something a little bit different this week because I've had a lot of questions about how I build my custom color palettes. So I'm going to share exactly what I'm thinking about when I build them every week for the different projects that we do. So I am going to be using this company. I know I'm going to butcher the name of this, but I think it's pronounced Aoktai. They sent me this really handy little keyboard. It's made specifically for Procreate. So I've been playing around with it a bit and I, I love it. it. It's been saving me a ton of time, so I wanted to share this. I'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested, um, but just keys like my quick menu, which I use all the time. I can just hit a button now, whereas my previous shortcut was four fingers on the screen to bring up that menu, so this is way easier just hitting a button. I am going to be using that in this video, so in order to set that up, you want to hit your wrench, or I could hit the wrench here, I guess. Uh, go to preferences, gesture controls, and then under quick menu, this is how I set mine to the four finger tap. And then when it is brought up, I have one of these options listed as recolor and that I use that option all the time. If you're unfamiliar with that, I have a free course that explains all of that, which I will leave a link to on screen and in the video description. Okay, so what I have on screen is some artwork that we created in last week's tutorial. So you can reference that video if you wanna create this artwork, but I have this tulip or my version of a simplified tulip and I've got all the color, all the elements listed on separate layers so we can recolor it and have some fun here and experiment with different color palettes. So first I'm just going to define the colors that this was made up of and then we're gonna talk about how I build my color palettes and this one's a little bit more advanced and I'll explain why that is afterwards. So this has a little eyedropper so I can just hit this key here and then I can eyedropper my color or I have my gesture set up as using this little icon and I can select my color that way. You can use any brush for this. I still have my Inky Edge Pro brush selected from last week and that's from my beautiful lettering brush set. So this one you can see I've got a pink, a yellow, and then two types of blues. There's a medium blue and a dark blue. And we're going to come back to this, but I just wanted to lay this out here right now. I'm going to duplicate this tulip group and we're going to recolor it together. So I'm going to move this down, reduce the size a little bit. So I usually have an idea of what color I want to start with. Let's say I want to start with a creamsicle orange. I'll come up here, I'll find my orange, and I know that I, I want it to be pretty light. I don't want too much gray or black in it. So the amount of gray you have is going to be your tone, the amount of black you have is going to be your shade, and the amount of white you have within your hue, your hue is your default color like orange or yellow or red. So the amount of white is called your tint. So this is going to be a tint of orange. It's going to be soft and a little saturated. So over here, the closer I get over here, the more pure my color becomes or saturated or vibrant or intense. Uh, so this is around that creamsicle color that I like. So I want it to be a bit different than that one. So I'm going to draw myself a dot right here, and that's my starting point. And then the next thing I do is usually build off of this with analogous colors. So your analogous colors are going to be colors that are right next to each other on the color palette. So if I have my color wheel right here, my yellow, orange, yellow, and yellow, green, these would all be analogous colors, just like my yellow, orange, orange, and red, orange. They're just colors that are next to each other on the color palette. So really, really easy. Um, and if you ever are wondering or confused, come down here to your harmony tab and you can choose analogous right here. So I can just tap on that and you've got some other options that you can choose from. So first we're going to talk about analogous. So you can see I can move my main color around and then I can see where my analogous colors would be. And you can vary from them. You don't have to stick true to them, but I like starting with the original color that I had in mind. So I'm going to come back to my disk view. And since I have this cream sickle orange color, now I can say, okay, well, maybe I want a more intense orange. So I'm going to come closer to my red, but I want it to be more saturated. So I can also change my tint, my tone or my shade or my saturation of this color. I don't have to keep it right where my creamsicle orange was. So I'm going to make this more intense and a little darker. So I'm adding a little bit of black because I'm coming this way and down. And let's see what that looks like. I definitely want them to look different, but they're still in the same family because they're analogous colors. And then maybe for my last color, I want it to be lighter than my creamsicle. So I'm going to come back to my creamsicle and move it more towards yellow. And I'm going to soften it up by adding a little more white. So I'm changing the tint of the color 
I still want it to have a little bit of orange in it. So I just want it to be a really light color to contrast how dark that orange was. So I usually establish my analogous palette and then I choose a complementary color. So since this is my most dramatic one, that is the color that I want to choose a complementary color of. So complementary colors are opposite colors. On your color wheel, you can see complementary, there's this arrow. So yellow, is the opposite of violet and you can turn this so we have blue is the opposite of orange and if you ever wonder about it in procreate if you don't have one of these color wheels i'll leave a link to where i got this one in the video description you just come down here you come to color harmony and instead of analogous just change this to complementary and then we can choose this orange and it'll show me right away this is the blue that i need it's going to be in the blue family. It's right around here. So I can select that and then just pop it in here as my color palette or I can adjust it. So I can come back to my disk view and maybe this is just a little too vibrant and I want it to be a little bit darker or maybe I want it to have a little, be a little closer to purple right here. I can bring it over if I want. If I want to see, like maybe I don't want it to be the opposite of that orange, I want it to be the opposite of this orange, I can come back to my color harmony and I can see this is getting a little closer to violet, which is what I personally prefer. So I can tap on that, come back to my disk view, and then adjust accordingly. So this, I always choose a complementary color because it's going to stand in stark contrast to what I've got going on right here. And you can see, that is a very bold choice, and it's going to be more dramatic for the eye to take in, whereas this is more soft and subtle, this is going to be drastic and dramatic. So how much saturation you have in it is going to add to that drama, because this one is a very saturated color. I mean, this is like pure saturation over here. So now we can test out our color palette. So I play around quite a bit with which elements I'm going to choose to be which colors. So let's come into this copy. We'll change the colored square, uh, maybe to this really dramatic blue. We'll see if that's too intense for the background color or not. I'll come to my stem and leaves. So usually I do my four finger tap recolor method, but now that I've got this keyboard, I can just hit that and hit recolor. And then I drag my crosshairs over to my stems and I can choose the different colors right here. I can cycle through them and see I think I want maybe the super intense orange for that part and then I can come to my sepal which is like that transition area move my crosshairs over it okay let's go to the petals next so quick menu recolor drag that over but I'm going to change this one to the light color I think and then we'll add we'll change the texture and you want to make sure if you have a bunch of elements like this that your flood level is all the way to max so you select them all at once and then I can play around with the different colors like that's too intense that's better maybe I want that one to be the dark orange too so you can see we can go back and forth and play around so this is one version of this and I'm going to show you another version so I'm going to duplicate this we'll move this over now I'm going to do a different version and change up the color. I'm going to build my color palette right here so I can just select these and pop these in down here. So it's a little easier. And let's do this again with a different variation. I use the exact same colors and we've got two versions of that right here and we can change up how much white or black we have in these colors like I feel like this background color has too much gray in it I'm not crazy about it so I can change that bring it right over here select that again and then add a little more let's see lightness to it and that feels a lot better to me so I can adjust that color right here so just like that we've got that color palette and we can reduce this color palette even more if we want to let me show you really quick let's just use two of the oranges instead of one now maybe I'm going to get rid of this one completely we're just going to use these three colors now make that one light 
and now we have a more limited palette and it still holds up. So you don't always have to use a complementary color. I have two blues, so this one's basically a tone and a shade. And then these two, I've got a pink and almost a yellow. So this would be my analogous. So I've got analogous group and then I've got a monochromatic group. I still have a really bold color in here. I always make sure I have some type of dramatic color because these ones are all feeling very similar. They're not going to stand out or call a lot of attention, but as soon as I add this pop of intense richness and darkness to this otherwise pretty light palette, it's going to add more drama to my piece and give your eyes something to immediately focus on. So keep that in mind too and use that drama where you want your eyes to go. Since this texture is one of the most most interesting parts of this design as well as the stamen up here. That's why I applied my darkest color there because I'm drawing your eyes straight into the most interesting part and then your eyes can travel around the rest of it and take it in. So let's do another example using this method where we choose analogous and then a complementary. So let's just choose a random color. Um, let's use some purple. I always struggle with purple so let's do that. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this one. And let's do some new color dots. So I'm just going to choose a purple. Maybe I'll do like a rich purple. Let's see. And let's choose some other colors. So I could either choose my analogous colors based off of purple, like more of a pink, and then more pinkish. And then my complementary would be yellow because I've got purple. So let's grab a yellow. So that's one palette really fast that we made off of that. I'm going to pop that down here so I've got that. And then let's also work off of this original purple and build another one. So I'm going to act like this is my complementary color and I'm going to build an analogous set off of my yellow. So I'm going to return to my yellow and that seems like too rich competitively right there. So I'm going to reduce the intensity of that a little bit by adding more white. And then I'll add a little bit of orange and I think these three work really well together. So let's move on with this and see how they both work. Okay, so we'll start, we'll do this one with this palette and then we'll do another one with this palette. So you can see how fast we can build a color palette that has a lot of harmony to it. And then I adjust them as I go too because I'm, I can already tell that this one's going to be too saturated. It's too similar. These two, I have to change um, that middle one. So let's come over here. I'm going to make sure I'm adding more contrast to it. So these ones are more contrasting now. And I already know my yellow we talked about before. There's, it's too saturated. So I'll come back to that yellow. I like that a lot better. And these colors I need to also add in. All right, let's play around with our color. Okay, I like this one, but I don't love it. And what I don't love about it is that my contrasting color, it's nice for the petal, but all this information is kind of getting lost because it's so close to this dark back color. So I kind of want to see what it looks like to have my yellow applied to my stem and my leaves instead of the petal. So I'm going to see what that looks like. So I'm going to duplicate that one. So you can see I'm using the exact same palette, but this one's far more effective than this one is because this is such a large element and it was just too close to my background color and needed to stand out more. So I also mentioned we were gonna use this palette, so let's do that. And we're going to make this work with just three colors. Just to give a quick summary of my go-to method for creating color palettes, choose a hero color. So for this one, I had that creamsicle yellowish orangish color. And then for this one, I used a really strong royal purple and then build off of that. So either that original color is your complementary color. So in this case, if we had orange, we switched to blue and then we have a complementary color, but we use the orange to build an analogous set off of. And within this analogous set, we're changing the tone, which is the amount of gray in the other colors or the tint, the amount of white or the shade, which is the amount of black 
or the saturation, which is the purity of that color. So you have so many options and you're still able to maintain a really healthy harmony. So I hope that helps you creating your own custom color palettes within Procreate. Once again, I'll leave a link to this color wheel if you wanna have this handy, as well as a link to this really helpful shortcut keyboard if you wanna pick one up. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next week.